Welcome back to Strange Resort, the podcast that lurks in the shadows of otherwise sunny vacation destinations. I am your host, George Hatfield, and some of you may be surprised to be hearing from me yet again, because the last time we spoke, I happened to be locked in a jail cell in Desperation, Nevada. I won't bore you with the details of my daring escape, except to say it wasn't that daring, and was thanks in large part to this mysterious key which I had found earlier that day. Suffice to say, after that fiasco in the desert, you can understand why I've decided to go far away from dusty sandstorms and tumbleweeds to a place where there are green forests and cool temperatures. I am hiking along the Appalachian Trail, near the border between New Hampshire and Maine, and I am staying at a quaint little mountain cottage called the Zeeland Falls Hut. The Appalachian Trail is the setting to more than a few ghost stories, but today I will be speaking to a person who almost perished in this wilderness but who lived to tell her own tale. Yes, tonight, constant listeners, I have the honor and privilege of interviewing Trisha McFarland, or, as she sometimes calls herself, the girl who loved Tom Gordon. Today, I have a very special podcast episode because it's not just going to be me. It's going to be me and a person who has been on an incredible journey and is now willing to talk about it with me. And that person is Trisha McFarland. Hi, Trisha. Hello. Hi, George. How's it going? Uh, It's going pretty well. Thank you so much for, for agreeing to talk to me. Uh, for those of you who don't know, if you were born before the year 2000, uh, Trisha, when you were only, is it, you were nine years old? I was nine years old. Yeah. So Trisha, uh, made the national news and I'm tempted to just start narrating about what happened. But, uh, if you don't mind, even though I know you have probably told the story many, many times over the last couple decades, uh, what happened to you back in the late 1990s? Yeah, so um, after my parents got a divorce, uh, my mom started taking us to a lot of different places to go uh, try and have some family bonding. And this unfortunate trip, we took uh, a hiking trip through the Appalachian Trails. And I got a little bit lost. And I was lost for a very long time um, in the woods, just trying to navigate my way. All right, so so you were you were lost for for days uh, yes. in the woods to the point where the the search parties basically started to give up uh, on ever finding you. So the big question that I'm sure everyone uh, wants to ask is, how did you survive that long? Yeah, so when they found me, I was actually uh, seventy four pounds. Um, I did not start that way. I was in the woods long enough to kind of lose myself and grow much older than any nine-year-old should grow. Like phys- physically, your body was was aging rapidly. Is that what you mean? No, I just mean mentally. I uh, experienced a lot of hard times and trauma, and yeah. I think as I went through the woods, I I learned more than I would have liked to about myself. And are you comfortable talking about what what that means? Absolutely. Um, when, when I was a kid, uh, you know, when they talked to me on radio shows and TV um, about my story, I didn't really understand the amount of trauma that I went through and experienced in the woods. Because um, you can't really understand it at that age. Mm -hmm. Um, And as an adult, I've had to unpack it 
you know, it's, it's hard to be alone, even if you were just in a, your house, but I was alone in the woods and, you know, something about being in the woods and being small, it, it starts to make you go crazy. You start to see things, you start to see things out in the woods. That's one of the things that I would love to uh, talk more about uh, before we get into the idea of, of hallucinations. How, how, what happened for you to get lost initially? So you were hiking with, you were on a trail, you were hiking yes. with your mother and your brother. And, and yes. then what do you remember happening that, that separated you from them? My, my brother hated going on these trips and he would always argue with my mother um, and she always arguing back. Um, mm -hmm. So I was almost not even there to them. Um, and I needed to use the restroom, uh, probably not enough to go off the trail. But I stayed back and I peed off the trail and thinking it would be funny uh, to just cut through and get back on the, tr on the trail they were on, I got lost. And instead of staying in one place, I just ran. I saw a snake underneath a tree. I ran. I touched the snake because I, for whatever reason, I was like, oh, I'll just go underneath the tree. Um, and I was so lost. And so what, so at, you're, you're lost. Uh, I'm guessing you're going to get hungry. You're going to get thirsty. What did you do to, you know, get those basic needs? Yeah. So for the first couple or for the first day, um, I thought that I would just find the trail or someone would find me. Um, and I did have a sandwich with me. We were going on a six mile hike. So I, I had a sandwich, I had my backpack, I had a rain poncho. I had, so I had a tuna sandwich. I had a hard boiled egg. I had a bag of chips. I had a bottle of soda, a water bottle, and my Game Boy and my Walkman. And that's what I had with me. So for the first 24 hours, I ate just regular food, thinking somebody was going to find me. Once that runs out, did you, did you forage off the land? Did you, yes. did you find um, any so mushrooms or anything like that? <laughs> my, my mother is um, an outdoorsy person, um, and she actually taught me a lot about being in the woods, um, just camping and hiking type of stuff. But she took me on a trip before and she had shown me the checkerberry bush. Um, and thank God it was in season. And so you can eat the berries and the leaves on checkerberries. Um, so that was something I ate. And, you know, my, my nine-year-old self would hate me for telling you, but I, I did also eat some fish. Your nine-year-old self wouldn't want to say this because you couldn't cook the fish. Is that, is that it? Yeah. Uh, okay. They, I couldn't cook them. They were small, and it was one of the only things I've ever killed by hand. I can't, okay. I can't really say I've killed anything else. So I, I ate um, a couple of fish. I ate uh, checkerberries, and I ate um, I don't know what were those little nuts called. We learned about them in science class, um, just like the semester before I got lost. I, they, I think those nuts probably saved my life too. Uh -huh. thank, thank you for sharing the detail about your, the, the fish and, and getting into things that maybe you haven't thought about or talked about for a while. And, and with that, if you don't mind circling back to the idea of, of being lost and, and basically starting to see things that, that I guess we would call hallucinations. Uh, so what types of, of things did you, did, do you remember seeing? So pretty early on, um, only, I think only 48 hours into me being lost, I tripped down a ledge, like a hill or cliff, mm -hmm. small cliff side, but a cliff side. Um, and I bumped into a bush of wasps. It was, it was like a, a wasp mess. Uh -huh. um, and they stung me on the way down. And after that, I just had an intense fear of just wasps. They, I mean, they stung me all over. Um, so that, that was a lot of the hallucinations. I wouldn't, 
most of it can be explained away. At one point, after I had found a large amount of food, I saw three men that I thought were priests of different gods. And there was one scary one, uh, and his face had wasps all over it. I think, I think that most of it can be chalked up to, I was a very scared little girl in a terrible situation. In some of the reports way back when, um, I, I think it's mentioned, it's described as an imaginary friend who was one of your favorite baseball players. Yes, Tom Gordon. Yes, that can you, really- Can you tell us about that? That got me through a lot. So Tom Gordon is, or was the pitcher for the Red Sox at the time. And my father and I were very big Tom Gordon fans. I, he was my number, I was his number one fan, at least in my head. And imagining that I was talking to him and going through the situation I was going through really helped me process what was happening. Uh, and even towards the end, when I found the path that finally led me back to uh, society, <laughs> back to humanity, mm -hmm. um, he was actually, in my mind, he was the one that pointed it out. So he pointed out where to go next. So I have had uh, several experiences uh, as I've been making these podcast episodes. Uh, sometimes, as you probably know, sometimes I'm uh, staying in places that are supposedly haunted. And as my listeners know, I, I'm usually on the, I'm open-minded, but I'm usually on the skeptical side of things. And so I guess what I've always been looking for with these types of experiences is whether or not, you know, what I'm seeing or hearing or experiencing ha has given me any information that I couldn't have obtained myself. So in the case of the these hallucinations, in particular, the friendly Tom Gordon hallucination, did this vision help in any way that was outside of your own consciousness? I really can't say. Um, definitely, if he, if he was really with me or if this version of Tom Gordon was really with mm -hmm. me, uh, it helped me stay on the, the right directions. And going back to that more sinister one, um, the, you, you had said that there were three sort of visions and in each one you've described as as gods so so they were actually um priests oh priests so, yes yeah priests of gods priests so of gods. there was i'll just go through the three there was okay. the uh, priest of the god of tom gordon okay uh, because he always points up or he always did point up uh to the sky almost thanking god um, oh and there was the priest of the sub audible. My father was always um, skeptical of religion. And so the few talks that I had with him about religion, he said that he believed in the sub audible. So that priest looked a lot like my father. And then the third, the third was the priest of the wasp god or the lost the God of the Lost had a couple different names to me. When he like showed his face to me, he was covered in insects and wasps and, you know, underneath, it was almost like a mass of insects and just terrifying. Sure. And he, he told me that uh, I was the Lost God's property already and that it was inevitable. You know, and, it, and there is something to be said about right before I was found, oh, while I was being found, really, um, the, the bear. Tell us about the bear and I guess what, what you were seeing at, at, at that sort of very intense moment. If you asked nine-year-old Trisha, um, I would have told you that I beat the bear with my... Well, I wouldn't even say that it was the bear. I would have said that it was the the god of the lost. Um, that's that's what you were when this bear is approaching. You're you're 
almost back to civilization and this bear apparently has been following you is that is that correct i think it was you know looking back um there were quite a few nights where i think that bear must have been so close by stalking me really at least it felt like it there were nights where i would wake up and there would be something near me in the clearing and it wasn't a deer uh -huh. that's for sure instead of running I tried to face down the bear and, you know, really I was kind of successful. I took my Walkman in hand and I kind of Tom Gordon pitcher style threw my Walkman at the bear at just the right moment um, so that it got away from me, uh, flinched backwards. And uh, the man who saved me was able to uh, take a shot at the bear. Um, and then I did hit the bear with, uh, the Walkman. Wow. So. And your parents must have been so glad to to see you again. You know, I still I still remember waking up from the medical, like in the medical room and them being by my side. And I just I had to tell my father, you know, that I I saved myself and that I I I won. And it was nonverbal. I just pointed at the sky the same way Tom Gordon did but mm -hmm. I think he knew what I meant. Yeah. Speaking of Tom Gordon, I, I have to ask, how did you feel as, as you probably were nine or 10 when Tom Gordon up and leaves the, the Red Sox? Uh, well, I'm always gonna love Tom Gordon, but he really did break my heart when he left the Red Sox. Oh, I'm sorry. What are you? We've been talking a lot about your nine-year-old self. Let's talk about, and now you are in. You look very young, but you are in your, <laughs> your mid thirties. Yes. Uh, so, what have you been doing with your life? Yeah, um, I'm actually a park ranger now. I work at the Grand Canyon. Um, I try to stay away from large wood forests. <laughs> the forests. Um, <laughs> It's a little bit easier to find people in the Grand Canyon, so it's a little bit better. And so you've probably been a part of search and rescue missions. Have you found people that have been lost in the wilderness? Yes, yeah. It's almost therapeutic to go on those search and rescue missions. Do you Have you been uh, hiking back in the, the New Hampshire, Maine area uh, ever, ever since that day? Yes. In a way, those woods have a double meaning to me. I, I look back mm. on that time with a little bit of fondness, um, just because I was lost for so long out there. I feel like my myself is a little bit out there too. And, you know, I don't go alone, that's for sure. Well, I'd like to extend an invitation if you are interested in returning to Maine. I'm doing, I wouldn't call it a search and rescue, but maybe a search and research project uh, that is going to take place in a little town called Derry, Maine. And uh, I've been told that I should not go alone there. So think about whether or not you'd want to join our little team here at Strange Resort. That sounds uh, like an adventure to me. So I'm probably, I'd love to join you. Excellent. Well, you heard it here first, everyone. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much, Trisha. This has been a very special podcast of Strange Resort. And we will be seeing you soon from the town of Derry, Maine, in the not-too-distant future. And there you have it, folks, our exclusive interview with the girl who loved Tom Gordon. Special thanks to Trisha McFarland for talking to me via Zoom yesterday. And that is right, you heard correctly. For our next podcast project, we are going to Derry. I am anxious to find out more about this mysterious key. Well, I better head back to the Zealand hut before night falls. I'm actually not sure if this trail I'm on is meant for humans or deer. Fortunately for me, I've brought along my trusty compass. Hmm. Maybe I need to change the batteries. <laughs>